Now some tips for the Zorlone Canon Mark II Dual Linear Feedback Shift Register Battery. From the Harvestman. The Zorlone Canon Mark II is divided in three sections. Section A where the A outputs are optimized for gate generation. Section B where the B outputs are designed for audio signals and the editing section in the middle. Where all eight outputs can be edited individually. Each section has its own internal clock, each driving four outputs. The mix-out depends on the 4-channel attenue verting mixer. It mixes the outputs to one bipolar sum, while each individual outputs of section A only give positive signals. Inverting with the attenuverter will bring negative signals to the output mix. Let's use the jack light from Division 6 to have a visual representation of the negative and positive signals. The red light show positive and the blue light show negative signal. Center position mutes channel at mix output. Turning clockwise adds the corresponding channel to the mix. Turning counterclockwise subtracts it. Manual control of internal clock frequency with the frequency knob. The range button selects between the three modes, orange for normal speed, green for twice speed and red for low speed mode. An attenuverter for the CV input is available to affect internal clock frequency. Let's check the editing section a bit. The 8 outputs can each have a different configuration. To edit hold down the output select button and turn the rotary encoder until the desired output is illuminated with a green LED. Turn the encoder to define the length of the register which is visually represented on the display. Then, you can press the tab length button and continue turning the encoder to select the feedback tab configuration. These parameters determine the period of the pseudo-random sequences. Now let's have some fun with the seed input. Shorter shift register lengths have a higher pitch, as they divide the input clock by a smaller number. All configurations with an odd number of tap are non-maximal. Non-maximal sequences are divided into a number of different sequence lengths which are selected at random by pulsing the seed input. The seed input will update all 8 outputs. Try creating rhythmic shifts of timbre or sequence by sending gates to the seed input. When you have edited the outputs to your satisfaction, you may store them to memory by pressing down on the rotary encoder knob for 2 seconds. The range buttons will blink once to confirm the storage was successful. To reload the stored preset, double tap the encoder knob quickly. You can make the Zorlin's frequency to run faster by clocking with the external clock input with other sources. In this case it's a Dixie oscillator from IntelliGel. Note that while you'll clock the Zorlone cannon with external sources, the frequency section won't affect the speed, except in double speed mode, where it reacts to both rising and falling edges when used with external clock. Let's take the output B, designated for audio signal to create a small example of pseudo-melodic pattern. The Zorlin's output B is going to the double and or's VCA input, and we'll use the make noise pressure points to step some values to the Zorlin's frequency input and to affect the envelope's decay time a bit. Try inverting the signal with the attenuverter to transpose the sequence.
Even if the section A is designated for gates and the section B is for audio purpose, they can be used in both ways. Now let's have more fun by creating a gate sequence with section A. The first gate will trig the asteroid bass drum from Blue Lantern module. Editing the output will change the sequence. Well well, let's add some more percussions because I'm not convinced yet. Now we're getting somewhere, a base similar C tear it is, why not? A piston Honda to an Optomics. Now I'm getting hornier and hornier, let's crank up the tempo a bit shall we? We will take the main clock out of the Stilson hammer to clock the upper section of the Zorlone cannon. By using some clock divider or multiplier or any other logic module to stay synchronized with the entire patch. You can also use the section B at different divisions to have longer loop patterns and sending signal to the seed input once in a while to create some variations. The whole Zorlone cannon can also be used as a gate generator for sample and hold, mute channels, send gates to logic modules, switching inputs of cross faders, clocking delays, ping 4ms modules, and much more into your patch, all this synchronized with your main clock, or at random speed. When combined with the Time Safari Mark II and the A Sound of Thunder Expander you may have the most fun you've ever had with your modular system.